Gentlemen, our musical mystery flight touches down in the world's second largest country. Hey, hey, my, my, we're saluting the rocking legends of Canada. We're taking care of business on Rockwing! <laughs> for our beloved house band. They've been up on Cripple Creek, but they've sprung no leaks. A rocker's dream if I ever did see one. Luscombe, Renna, Ferry and Naila, the Rockwiz Orchestra! <laughs> and now, a cinnamon girl with a heart of gold. Shout hallelujah and welcome the quiz mistress shimmering like the northern lights above Saskatchewan, Julia Zamira! <laughs> Quizze. Tonight's the night we bow down to the musical icons of Canada, or Canadia, as Tony Abbott likes to call it. <laughs> Young, Mitchell, Cohen, Adanko. No, not a law firm, but just the tip of the Canadian musical iceberg. Brian, who are the legends we're saluting tonight? Julia, perhaps we should ask who didn't make the cut when we applied our stringent legend criteria. So alas, ladies and gentlemen, no room for Thrush Hermit, Alex is on fire, the Bare Naked Ladies, or sadly, Corey Hart. Oh yes, Corey Hart who wore his sunglasses at night, who walked into a wall and smashed his face. Mm. <laughs> Now, the Rockwiz audience is like a mighty maple tree, and when we tap that tree, knowledge like rich maple syrup flows forth. Sweet, beautiful and thick. Tonight's Rockwiz is a two of those things. Let's find out as we meet the four working for us this weekend. Rockers is delighted to meet you one and all. Hello, Brian. Hello. Who is your favourite Canadian performer? I'm going to say the lowest of the low. Oh. Now, this band um, sang a song called Rosie and Grey, which was my wedding song. Was it really? It was. It was sung by, well, it was covered by Widows, Weddings Parties Anything. Oh, Weddings Parties Anything. But the lowest of the low. Who's Canadian? Who's the, who's the band? The lowest of the low. <laughs> Oh, gee, that's good marketing. And Brian, what about the first concert you ever went to as a young man? Well, in 1981, uh, I got my first pay packet from the State Bank of Victoria. Oh, a massive $77. Get out. That's right. I bought a pizza, a slab, ticket to ACDC at the My Music Bowl oh. with, with the Angels and uh, Swanee. Oh. Still had $40 left. Still had $40 left change. Those were the days. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome to you. Thank you. Hello, Hannah. Hello, Julia. Do you have a favourite Canadian performer? Well, I think it would have to be Joni Mitchell, closely followed by Katie Lang. Yes, I agree. The women are amazing. Um, and what about the first concert you ever went to? Well, that was when I was about 12, and I went with my friend Missy Blanche, and it was down at Kirribilli, and all the artists were on a pontoon on the harbour. And Sherbet was on. Mm. 
Yes. On a pontoon, if you don't mind. On a pontoon, and some girls tried to swim out. Did they? Max Merritt and the Meteors. Oh. Skyhooks. Yes. And ACDC. Get stuffed. <laughs> and I can't remember who else, but, you know, hey, that's pretty bloody good. That's a top four. I thought it was pretty cool. Yes, amazing. Well. <laughs> Congratulations to you, Hannah. It's a very good first concert. Hello, Eliza. Hi, Julia. How are you? Yeah, great, thanks. Great. <laughs> so I think it's been established. This is from Canada. <laughs> now, what was your first concert, Eliza? I went to see the Bare Naked Ladies. The Bare Naked Ladies! There you go! Perfect. Perfectly. You mentioned. <laughs> and how old were you? Uh, I was in grade 10 and I saw them in Halifax. Now, Halifax is this, the place where they. Um, well, they wrote Hello City about, and it's not a love song. They say, Hello City, you've made an enemy of me. Whoa, 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 whoa. And uh, they made their apology that night. Thank you. <laughs> they apologised for writing a, a nasty song about Halifax. Um, Eliza, what about you? You have all the Canadians to choose from. Who do you choose as your legend? Oh, my legend is probably from the East Coast. They're coming up with some great music out there. And uh, she, her name is Rose Cousins. Fantastic. Everybody, Rose Cousins. <laughs> Check it out tomorrow. Woo! 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 And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Therese. Now, Therese, you're not uh, from Canada, but you've lived there a long time. Yes, and I have my Canadian passport now too. Do you? Oh, yes. Well, that's a nice feeling, mm. isn't it? Double passport. It is. oh, yes. Love it. Who would be your Canadian legend? Um, I would have to go with Snow. He's from Toronto, where I lived, and he helped me win a few karaoke contests <laughs> in the really? 90s. Yeah. Did he really? Yeah. That's your favourite of all the Canadian legends. <laughs> Seriously, the the mileage I've had with Informer has been amazing. <laughs> uh, what was your first concert? <laughs> My first concert was Rolf Harris. But if we went to another concert, if there was another concert you'd gone to after that, <laughs> that I feel a bit more comfortable talking about, um, Therese, what would that have been? Um, I went to Hot House Flowers. That's a much better answer, yeah. everyone. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your fabulous rock whistles for this evening. The first of tonight's special guests is ready to take the stage, but first we must ask, which song can it be now? Reaching number 22 on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1974, this song features Jose Feliciano on guitar and David Crosby and Graham Nash on backing vocals. Inspired by a holiday with agent David Geffen and Robbie and Dominique Robertson, the song is about the pressures Geffen was under and the freedom of being in Paris. Yes, Therese. Free Man in Paris? It is Free Man in Paris by Joni Mitchell. To perform that song, please welcome Olympia. <laughs>
is yes. your stage name. I'm going to call you Olivia for the yes. moment, if I may. Olivia, can I thank you for doing one of my favourite Joni Mitchell songs, Aliza? Do you agree? I love that one. I love it too. Great version. Is Joni a favourite? Joni uh, is a favourite, and I taught myself guitar, George Benson YouTube clips, and Joni Mitchell tunings. Wow. And uh, I did a lot of damage to a lot of my early guitars with Joni Mitchell tunings, because they are like the Enigma code. And, uh, <laughs> You gotta crack them. Yeah, you gotta crack them, and unfortunately, they did crack some of my guitar necks <laughs> right in half. So great. The song, of course, about David Geffen, mm -hmm. the producer, uh, feeling he could actually be free in Paris, as you often do. Unfettered. Unfettered and, and alive. alive. I mean, the words are so good. Unfettered and alive, nobody calling me up for favours, yep. no one's future to decide. Paris, obviously, a great place to be. We can relax and, and get creative. Have you been? No, I haven't been. Uh, I got this jack. This jacket's French. Is it? But I picked it up in a car park in South Melbourne. Great. <laughs> it's, uh, it's probably the the retail value is probably a year's rent for me. So I'll be hanging on to this. I do. Yeah. Do you have a favourite Canadian artist apart from Joni? Mm. So many. Yes. I had no idea. I, the first time I heard Deja Vu, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, I think I was ten or eight. I stayed up all night. And by the time 7 a.m. came, I was just like four dead in Ohio. I was just chanting it like I'd been overcome by a cult. And I told my parents, I'm going to write new folk music, which my father detested greatly because he was a funk musician. Um, but he, I loved it. And uh, Neil Young guitar has had a massive influence on my life. Dead Man, the soundtrack, the Jim Jaramouche film. Love it. Now, look, before we move on, Olivia, would you respond with a, a word? Sure. Uh, either yeah, nah, or maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, about your opinion, and it's purely your opinion, of whether these Canadian artists are indeed legends. Here we go. Michael Bublé. Oh, okay. So, by legend you mean a CD I'd buy Mum for Christmas. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's what you'd buy for Christmas? Uh, yes. That what would, about... That would be their legend status. Would you? Think? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Diana Krall. Yes. Tick. Tick. 2012 Christmas present. Celine Dion. Tick. Power of Love. First CD I've ever bought was for <gasps> Mum. Really? Yeah. Was it for you, for your mum? Well, well. Column A, right. column B. Here you go, mum. I'll play it. Yeah, that yeah. Kind of thing. Power yeah. of love. Oh, yeah. the power of love. Yeah. Stop it, and I really mean stop it. <laughs> Please welcome our fabulous first amazing musician, Olympia. We're acquainted with one of our guests, but like an ice hockey player bending over to pick his teeth up off the ice. Some balance is required. Let's meet guest number two by asking, what legendary song can it be now? Initially inspired by the phrase, the South will rise again, and with lyrics that tell of the last days of the American Civil War, this song was written by a Canadian and sung with exquisite feeling and dignity by a drummer from Arkansas. A huge hit for Joan Baez in 1971, the original version was from the band's second album. It was recorded in Sammy Davis Jr.'s Pool House in Los Angeles. Ralph Gleason in Rolling Stone said, it seems impossible that this isn't traditional material handed down from father to son straight from that winter. Yes, Brian? The night they drove old Dixie down. That's right, the night they drove old Dixie down by the band. To perform that song, please welcome Brian Cadd.
Brian Cadd, how are you? Julia, I'm so fabulous. Are you? <laughs> You're fabulous. a fabulous guy. Let's face it, we toured with you and we loved every moment of you, I have oh, to say. Oh, it was say. wonderful. That was one of the great moments of my life. I loved that. Oh, really? It was really oh, fabulous. Oh, we loved you. God, he nailed it every night. Now, listen, Brian, that song. Yes. Does it mean something special to you? Oh, unbelievably so. Uh, if I can tell a little story. I, uh, in the middle of the 60s, I was in a group called The Group and we were living in London. And the uh, Easy Beats had a basement flat in Earl's Court. And they used to take their PA from the road and they'd set it up in their living room. And they had a resident joint roller and, and you'd sit there and, and it was you know, half dark and they'd play anything they could think of to play. And it was about three o'clock in the morning and there's a knock on the door, which back in those days wasn't necessarily a good thing. <laughs> so we're all, you know. And it turns out that it was the Cream's Roadie. Do you remember the band, the Cream? Yes. And he came in with a seven and a half inch reel of the first half of music of Big Pink. And then nobody had ever heard it anywhere. He got it from the studio. So we sat there, we put the joint roller into overtime. Yes. And we, we, le we left it. We played it so many times, we left about noon that day. And me and a league singer from the group were walking across Hyde Park afterwards and we're going, what in the hell are we doing here? Why are we here? It was such a substantial step up from anything that anyone had ever heard. Before. And did you feel why we do what we're doing in England? Did you feel you should be in Canada? Just no, I felt like I should be at home teaching kindergarten or something. Yeah, I'm... right, right. And I actually challenged your whole level of musicality. Yes, because everything up to that time was I love you and you love me and she hates her and he's and Yeah, right. And all of a sudden we're talking about people and railways and civil wars and... Yeah. It was such a dramatic difference for all songwriters, really. Uh, Richard Manuel, you're a, friend, a, a, oh. a fan of his in the band. Yes. Why Richard? Well, up until that time, we'd only really had the, the people play from the animals and a couple of those kind of organisty kind of people. And this guy was a really legitimate, fantastic, beautiful piano player in a rock band, in perhaps the best rock band. And so for us piano players, see, guitar players had hundreds of thousands of idols. Yeah, you know, they could models, worship. Yeah. You know, we had a bloke on a far feast, so that was it for us. And so. <laughs> When this guy came along and played, we all went, OK, that's what we want to do. Now, first concert you ever went to as a young man? Johnny O'Keefe in Perth. In Perth. My mum took me and the opening act was Bobby Lim <laughs> doing stand-up. Come on, imagine, oh, no. imagine going on before Johnny O'Keefe going, take my wife, please. Oh, you know? my God. Now, Brian, are your responses to these artists because someone's legend is someone else's loser. So here we go. Uh, I'll just give you some names and you tell me if you think they are a legend or not with yeah, no, or maybe. Richard Manuel. Yeah! Yes, yes. <laughs> of course. Katie Lang. Yes, actually, I think yes. yes. Neil Young. Oh, certainement. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the wonderful Brian Cadd. <laughs> Well, these pleasantries and visions of prairies and Rocky Mountain highs are all well and good, but we've got a show to do. Time now for round one, not that local and generally set in Canada. As tradition dictates, let's begin with you completing some band names. Martha and the... Muffins. I'll give it to you, Brian. Thank Correct. You. Cowboy. Junkies. That's right. The tragically... Hip. Hip is correct. The whole team, look at they work as a team. They're like in unison, they're on the same wavelength. Arcade. Fire. I'll give it to you, great. The guess. Who. Who is correct. Which singer wrote the Tom Jones hit, She's a Lady, translated the lyrics for Sinatra's signature song, My Way, from French into English, and co-wrote with Michael Jackson? Paul Anker. Paul Anker's correct, Brian. Thank what you. What a feast of work there that he did. Really? Considering? Yeah. I mean, that's a little bit of... Uh, just any one of those would be enough. I mean, I right, know. and he wrote the Tonight Show theme, which was played for 30 years You're on joking. television every night. Really? <gasps> for Johnny Carson? Yes. Wowzers. Did you come across him, Brian, in your, in your travels? Did you ever come across Paul Anker? I was once sitting in an office at Capitol Records and the guy's phone rang and he said, Hello, Paul. Paul Anker called this guy. Not me, this guy. Yeah. And he was calling from his personal plane. Rosie. Which back in 74 was a pretty good trick. <laughs> so you were, you were in a room when a phone rang. 
And so on the other end of that phone was, was Paul Anka. You can see the connection, can't yes, you? Yes, wow. you can. True or false, the Guess Who's lead singer Burton Cummings trained 12 Melbourne Cup winners. <laughs> oh. Brian? I'm going to say false. Of yeah, course it is. Who should it have been? Bart Cummings. Bart Cummings Bart. is correct. Which American band led by two sisters found its major success in Canada? Yeah. Is it Heart? It so is Heart, Elisa, yeah. you're correct. Recorded by Elvis, Dylan and Peter, Paul and Mary, who wrote Early Morning Rain? <laughs> yes, Olympia. Uh, Gordon Lightfoot. It was Gordon Lightfoot, lovely lady. He also wrote Sundown and If You Could Read My Mind. Dylan once said that when he heard a Lightfoot song, he wished it would last forever. Mm. Has he read the lyrics to If You Could Read My Mind? They're a bit weird, aren't they? It's weird. If you could I'm a read ghost in a wishing well. Oh, it's the 70s. They wrote stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> they were off their trolley. <laughs> Which member of Backman Turner Overdrive might be a cryptic crossword answer to the clue halfback flanker with extremely healthy sexual appetite? Yes. Overdrive. Overdrive, yeah, well, sure. No. But it's his name. It's Backman. What's his first name? Oh, Randy. Randy is what I'm after. <laughs> Full name. Brian. Randy Backman Overdrive Naughty. Yes. And you make the decision consciously. I'm going to call my kid Randy. For the rest of its life. For the rest life. of his life. Hi, I'm Randy. Get out. <laughs> no, no. It's nuts. What did Rufus Wainwright sing about craving along with cigarettes? <laughs> yes. Cigarettes and chocolate milk. You're absolutely chocolate correct. Milk. Well played to you. Yeah. Give a round of applause. Yeah. Rufus Wainwright's mother is Kate McGarrigal. Who was Kate's sister that she performed with? Anna. Now's your time to shine, Hannah. Yeah. That's correct. The singer of which Canadian band has been described as sounding, and I quote, like a snip and fix time at the kennels? <laughs> I know. I mean, that's bad. Yes. I was going to say Neil Young. Neil Young, no. no. It's got to be that lead singer from Rush. It is the lead yeah. singer from Rush. <laughs> Getty Lee. A review in the New York Times said Lee's voice suggests a munchkin giving a sermon. <laughs> <laughs> Which band performed as the Cockroaches? And that's not the Wiggles. Oh, damn. Because that's an Australian band. We're in Canada right. here, OK? Which band performed as the Cockroaches at the Elmo Cambo Club in Toronto in 1977? Rolling Stones. Correct, that's right. Sing the next line from Dan Hill's Canadian number one hit. Sometimes when we touch, the honesty's too much, and I have to close my eyes and, and hide. I, I want to hold you till I die. Do it, Therese! Till we both break down, down and cry. I want to hold you till the tear in me subsides. Therese, ladies and gentlemen. Your time in Canada served you well. <laughs> Complete this lyric. Here we go. Sign, sign, everywhere a sign. Something, 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 go in my mind. Oh. Do this, don't do that, can you read the sign? Yeah. I'm going to give it to you, Brian. Absolutely. Great. And who was it, Brian? Five Man Electrical Band. Correct. Five Man Electrical Band is correct. Canadian or American? Drake. Canadian. I'll give it to you. Shania Twain. Yes. Canadian. Correct. Loudon Wainwright. Yes. Canadian. Or American. American is correct, Hannah. Thank you for being there. David Crosby. See, now they're confused. American. Very good, Hannah. That is correct. Stephen Sills. American. Oh, Hannah, you're getting all the points for your team. Well played. Graham Nash. English. Oh, Ooh, the ball was the... Oh, what would you have said, Olympia? I would have said English, definitely. Would you? With a lot of confidence. Thank Sorry, Brian, I'll give you another one. Thank you, Diane. Canadian or American, these bands? Crash Test Dummies. Canadian. Thank you, Eliza. New Pornographers. Yeah. Canadian. Oh, I love them. Yes, correct. Journey. American. Very good. Steppenwolf. Canadian. I'll give it to you. Which Herman Hess novel was Steppenwolf named after? Steppenwolf. You are listening, looking and learning, <laughs> Hannah. Steppenwolf featured on the soundtrack of which outlaw biker movie of 1969? 
Easy Rider. Oh, the fabulous Easy Rider is correct. Coined by William Burroughs in his novel Soft Machine, which Steppenwolf song used the term heavy metal in its lyrics? <gasps> yes. Born to be wild. Born to be wild is what I'm after. Orchestra, get your motor running, head out onto the highway and serve up some numbers. <laughs> Quizzes, answer these questions a single word at a time, like Dougald after 12 Canadian club whiskies. It's a speedy segment we call Rocket Man. <laughs> Complete the album names after the gold. Rush. Correct. Songs of love and hate. Yes, it's a fine line. Two sides of the same coin. Music from Big. Pink. Of course. That's the thing you listen to. Stone out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Court and... Spark. Correct. These album tracks. Don't let it bring you... Down. Correct. Famous Blue. Ranko. Of course, and you're wearing one now. This wheel's on... Fire. Fire. Yes. Court and... Uh, yeah, again, because yeah. it's an album and a single. See what we did there? <laughs> right. And the names of these bands, B, T. Oh. Thank you, Therese. The guess. Who? Correct. And these singles. Working for the... Weekend. Weekend, Weekend yes. is what I'm after. American. Work as a team. Woman. American Woman is what I'm after, and it's a Canadian song. Excellently played. Dougal, the score check, s'il vous plaît, while Lucky and Ash make us sit up and take notice of the guess who. Like a rabid, demented moose lunging for your skull. <laughs> Some songs grab on and won't let go. It's the riff slash moose claws that get lodged in your brain. Let's shake them loose in million dollar riff. Orchestra, let us have the first riff, numero un. Bring back memories that Absolutely. song. I just want to dance. What is it? It's Echo, Echo, Echo Beach. Yes, Martha by... and the Muffins. Martha and the Muffins is correct, Echo Beach. Very good. <laughs> Riff numero deux. Yes, Brian. Safety dance. It is. Men without. Hats. Men Without Hats, the safety dance. <laughs> Riff numéro 3. Yes, Olympia. I feel it all by Feist. You feel it all, yeah. so do I. That so is absolutely I. right. The so beautiful Feist. <laughs> yeah. Gorgeous Feist. And... Finalement, riff numéro 4. Yes, Brian. I was going to say, Neil Young. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's like rocking in the free world. Oh, that's disappointing. No, no. yes. No, it's not. Cinnamon Girl. Cinnamon Girl yeah. is what I'm after. Excellent Gosh. work, people. But has it troubled the scoreboard, Dougal and Brian? Look snappy while the orchestra makes us happy oh. with a Cinnamon Girl. <laughs>
We continue saluting Canada's music legends, and with so much on the line for both teams, you can imagine that the pressure is really mounty. <laughs> Thank you. But our next segment might provide some breathing space. Eight questions in the middle of the show suggesting it's the middle eight. Here we go. Which Toronto band recorded a cover which Lou Reed called the best and most authentic version of Sweet Jane I've ever heard? <gasps> Cowboy Junkies. Yes, and you need the points. Good on you, Hannah. Wow. Which French Canadian songstress has recorded nine French albums and won numerous awards by the time she was 18? Celine Dion. But of course it's Celine Dion. When Justin Bieber visited Anne Frank's house in Amsterdam, he signed the guest book. Complete his slightly bizarre comment. Anne was a great girl. Hopefully she would have been... A believer. A believer is correct. I know. Stunned silence. I know. <laughs> Well, I mean, if we never heard from him again, it'd be fine, A. And B, he doesn't have to work again, technically, any time, because he's eluded. And C. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And from the ridiculous to the sublime, on accepting a Lifetime Achievement Award, who said, if I had been given this attention when I was 26, it would have turned my head. At 36, it might have confirmed my flight on a morbid spiritual path. At 46, it may have prompted the plotting of a getaway. But at 56, hell, I'm just hitting my stride and it doesn't hurt at all. All right. Is that Leonard Cohen? It is Leonard yes. Cohen. Well played. <laughs> Cohen once described himself as A, the grocer of despair, B, the mailman of misery, or C, the milkman of melancholy. Mm. The grocer of despair. He was the grocer of despair, <laughs> that's correct. Which Leonard Cohen song was originally recorded by Jennifer Warne on her 1987 album Famous Blue Raincoat? Yes. First we take Manhattan. We do take the borough of Manhattan, that's correct. And to perform that song, please welcome the lead singer of Something for Kate, Paul Dempsey. <laughs>
those items that you sent me Of the monkey and the plywood violin Now I practiced every night And now I'm ready Our first will take Manhattan Julia. What a great version of that song. Thank you. That what a great amazing. song. Oh, a great song. Are you, were you familiar with it before we asked you to do it for the show? I was, yes. Yes, I'm a, I, I, love, I love Leonard Cohen. Oh. Who doesn't? Would he be your favourite Canadian performer? Well, I mean, Leonard Cohen, genius, lyrics, amazing. Mm. Uh, Neil Young, guitar, crazy. No one else does that. Great. Um, and uh, the band, man, like Levon Helm, Rick Danko, all Richard that. Manuel, Fantastic. Garth Hudson. Amazing. They're Great. all amazing. And they're all in a band. The band. The band. Yeah. Well, the band. Together. I know. Like, I know. Clever. Yeah. Get those um, guys together. You can only call it the band. Because um, there's never going to be another band. Sorry, Julie. I'll I let know. you talk now. No, but it's true. It's true. <laughs> There'll never be another band. Isn't that true? You can never call yourself the band no. ever again because of the comparison. Yes. Hey, while we're here, first concert, Paul, what was it? Uh, uh, my mum at Bunratty Castle in South Melbourne. <laughs> Your mum did a concert? My mother and her sister and a bunch of their friends were the house band at an Irish theatre restaurant <laughs> called Bunratty Castle in South Melbourne and that was probably the first uh, thing I, I think was everyone talking. remembers them, Paul. <laughs> Excellent. Now, we have on our hands, as the Canadians are fond of saying, a real beaut. Do they, Eliza? Real beaut, eh? Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. Thank you, Eliza. <laughs> Thank you. For our winning team, Paradise Awaits, Mind you, someone will pave paradise and you'll be in the parking lot with the others. Haven't we learned anything since Joni's big yellow taxi? Paradise must not be paved. Your questions begin now. Hmm. Here we go. Complete the names of these Canadian performers. Celine. Dion. Correct. KD. Yes. Lang. Of course. Nelly. Furtado. Furtado. Alanis. Morissette. Of course. She displayed a questionable sense of irony. Sorry, yeah, I was going to say that. In ironic. <laughs> yeah, that's ironic that you were going to say that. Oh, man. And in hand in my pocket, her song, Alanis Morissette seems to have multiple hands. One stays in her pocket while the other hand's flashing a... Peace sign. She's also giving a... High five. She's also flicking a... Cigarette. She's also playing... A piano. She was also hailing... Taxi. Yeah. A taxi cab, correct, that's right. The initials in the name of Canadian singer Katie Lang stand for A, Kiki D, B, Ken Doan, C, Kidney Dialysis, or D, Catherine Dawn. Catherine Dawn. Of course they do, Kidney Dialysis. That's ridiculous, that's not true. <laughs> Which Australian singer-songwriter has recorded O Canada, a song inspired by the Syrian refugee crisis? Missy Higgins. That is correct. Which Cree Indian singer-songwriter wrote Universal Soldier and co-wrote Up Where We Belong? Buffy St. Marie. Buffy St. Marie is correct. Up Where We Belong. Made famous by Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warren in which movie? An Officer and a Gentleman. Oh, please. An Officer and a Gentleman, yes. Do you remember there was a very saucy sex scene in An Officer and a Gentleman where Deborah Wing is astride, I should say, Richard Gere, and, oh, it's something else, honestly. It's so saucy, Dougal. <laughs> um, and then at the end, what happens? What's the iconic moment at the end where he picks up Deborah Winger? She falls off. No. Picks, picks her up and carries her out and puts her hat on, yes. put his hat on her. And, and where does he carry her out on, Brian? He, he carries her out of the factory. I oh, know. Walking out. Yeah, because he's going to get married and he's going to take married. her away from all of this. I know. It's terrible. 
So why were you such a fan of an officer and a gentleman? Uh, my wife does it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Co-written by Sally Seltman, who counted one, two, three, four? Feist. It's correct. How many strong winds did Ian and Sylvia sing about? Yes. Four strong winds. It was four yeah. strong winds. I would imagine you might have known that, Eliza, uh, that there were four <laughs> yeah. strong winds in Canada. We call them the wreck houses. Do they? The winds, the, yeah. The wreck houses. <laughs> yeah. Oh, correct. At what time was Rufus Wainwright's dinner? Yes. Eight. Eight's a good time to good. eat, isn't yeah. it? I mean, it could have been anything, but dinner and eight's what we're after. Which country singer started her career in honky tonks when she was eight years old? Oh, is that Shania Twain? It is Shania Twain. Good. Which Canadian songstress is married to Elvis Costello? Yes. Dana Kroll. Kroll is correct. Who do we associate with these songs? Cuts like a knife. Brian Adams. Yes. Constant Craving. Yes. KD Lang. Correct. Snowbird. Anne Murray. Yes. Suzanne. Leonard Cohen. I have to give it to you. The Weight. The Band. Look at you with your correct answer. <laughs> Sunglasses at Night. Yes. Corey Hart. Of course. Rocking in the Free World. Neil Young. You're absolutely right. Oh, Brian, I've just realised we've almost at the end of the show and there's been absolutely no mention of the great Canadian rock band Nickelback. I would have thought Three, that we might have two, done a bit of... One. <laughs> It was so much fun. Congratulations, Rock Wizards. You've done a splendid job. But if you thought everything was over then, b -b 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 baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. Dougal, it's time for the final scores. Because you know what's at stake, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Here we go. Which Leonard Cohen song mentions tea and oranges that have come all the way from China? Suzanne. 100 million points! A ball. We've mentioned the words moose, mountie, maple and McGarrigal, so it's been a truly Canadian experience. Thank you to our wonderful, wonderful rock wizards and our special guests. And remember to check in on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and our website. We leave you with a lyric from the venerable singer-songwriter Leonard Cohen. There is a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. To take us out tonight, Olympia, Brian and Paul are coming together for a classic from 1989. Au revoir, mes amis, and do keep rocking.